Uh, Glenn just said that you know every 10 minutes uh, by law the repeaters here put out an identifier Morse code like. Uh, it also puts out uh, an identifier a voice transmission. Now that was what now? W5AUU slash R. And, and uh, from our repeater, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the W5AUU repeater, Conway, Arkansas. And that was the voice identifier. Now Lynn on the tower is going to have a lot of help getting this uh, antenna and mount up there. Uh, he does not have to haul up that antenna and mount himself. He, he's already doing enough as it is. So these gentlemen here are tying it off and getting this uh, red rope secured to it as well as possible. We don't want any slippage on the way up. And then they will have a guy wire, which is this blue wire, and they will guide it left and right and keep it away from the other antennas as it goes up. This individual over here will be doing the actual pulling and hauling to keep Lynn from working more than he has to. And Lynn is waiting for all of this to get started. Well, there she goes. Being pulled up. One guy's uh, gui guiding it up as it goes, and uh, another one's pulling it, like I said. Going up pretty quickly, actually. Okay, Lynn now has the uh, the antenna and mount in hand, and he'll he'll start hooking her up. Stuff up there with okay, they're yeah, getting ready to send the Heliax cable up to him, up to Lynn, who's on the tower. Is this going to be too close to the coax? I mean, the cable. What? That's the antenna. Well, that shouldn't be. Huh? Shouldn't be. Here she goes. Well, Eric's picking up the slack over here. There it goes. All the way up to old Lynn. And that's the way it's done. The antenna is up and uh, Lynn is on his way down now and as he comes down he'll tape he'll tape uh, the cable off here there and everywhere which is what he's doing right now until he reaches the bottom. Okay uh, uh, finally, are, are there any plans to enhance further the antenna, uh, add more antennas to the tower, no, anything like that? There, there's going to be a change here. Uh, one of the repeaters here is going to be moved to a new location so that it it's, spreads them out so you don't have everything all in one place. If something happened here, yeah, yeah. we would lose all of this communications ability, so we're going to, going to move one of the repeaters to a different location. And he's almost down. Almost to the bottom. Still taping things up. Hey, uh, Lynn, I think you might have missed the spot uh, way up there at the top. Okay. <laughs> I, th I think I can see it from here. Doesn't look very good. And he's down. Good job, Lynn. Excellent. Okay, finally we're back in the uh, the building. That cable that you saw him bring down and tape to the tower will come through the wall right here, and then it will go down and connect to this uh, bottom unit down. One of these two bottom units. He's running the cable through that rubber boot, and it will then go in to the wall right there. It'll look like much like this one right here uh, when he gets done. Okay, uh, now that the, the job is done, are you catching your breath now? <coughs> are you recuperating? Yes. Okay, yeah, it was, all right. Uh, it was a strain. It, yeah, it was a trying experience, wasn't it? it was. Yes, it was. All right. It was. I don't recommend it for the... Uh, for, for the faint at heart, right? Or the out of shape. Yeah. The out of shape, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is that right there, boy? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, folks. I hope you had a good time watching what goes on. Uh at a uh, amateur radio club work day. Uh, this sort of thing goes on all over the United States at the various clubs. Uh, it's nothing new. 
uh, even overseas these things are going on now in countries where previously ham radio was not allowed. Uh, China is one of them. Well, it's really expanding over there. They have these kids in backpack in China now out into the boondocks and, and they send Morse code all over. It's, it's, it's a new thing to them. Old stuff to us, new thing to them. They are just going crazy on it. They love that Morse code and they love uh, ham radio in general. I saw a YouTube video uh, on a Chinese island uh, where the fella said, you know, if I'd have been caught with this radio in my home 20, 25 years ago, they would have executed me. And so things have really gotten better over there. Uh, our tower climber, Lin, uh, that, that young fellow is, is an adventurous type. I guess that's what it takes to climb a tower. <laughs> I would never go up there, but he's a world traveler. That young man has uh, been in 19 different countries. And uh, his last, uh, the last country he went to was South Africa. He told me, he was talking to me about his uh, experiences he had in Johannesburg. And I guess his next trip is either going to be to China or Japan. Uh, probably China. And uh, I guess by the time, if he lives to be 50, 60 years old, he might have 50, 60 countries under his belt. So it, it takes that kind of person to go up one of those towers. If you learned one thing from these, this three-part video, I'm happy. It was worth doing. I certainly learned a whole lot. Uh, at my age, I can't get into it, you know, down to the nitty-gritty details and all that stuff. All I need, basically, is a general overview. And that's, so that's what I prevent, uh, present here. I can't, I just don't have enough time left uh, on this planet to, to start from scratch and learn that stuff from the very beginning to the very end. Uh, next time we go back to my G5 RV antenna. Uh, I've got to get that baby finished and uh, get Glenn King back over here again with his antenna analyzer. This is for those of you who have been following along with my videos. You know what I'm talking about. And, uh, if I can get that antenna going, I can get on the air. So uh, I appreciate you stopping in and, and, and watching the videos once again. Uh, until next time, this is John.